Welcome back to the channel. It is December 5th. We are coming in on the last few weeks of the NFL regular season. And we're going to get into, you know, wild card and all the, the goodness of the playoffs. But for this video, this purpose, I'm just giving you a week 13. All my bets, um, basically all the, all the leans and selections I like for each and every game on Sunday and Monday for this NFL season. Um, I'm going to do more of this, just give you my, my picks, um, do, do this on a weekly basis al along with the DFS stuff. So let's dig into this. We have like 12, 14 games um, in the next two days. So the first game on the docket is going to be the New Orleans Saints against the Atlanta Falcons. Here we have some in-division rivals right here. Uh, Falcons coming off a win, a surprising win against the uh, Las Vegas Raiders. Did not see that coming. A lot of people had money on the Raiders. Um, and now it's kind of funny looking at this line, even though the Falcons are home. Plus three um, underdogs right here. That you think it would be a little bit more for the Saints at only minus three. This line came in at like two and a half. It's bumped up to three now. Uh, Saints are a way better team, even you know if Taysom Hill is the quarterback at the moment. Um, and right here, this game, I think the value is all over the Saints. Um, I could take Saints money line and I can take the Saints to cover the three points because it's only three points. Um, and even if they win by three, then at least you get your money back. Um, Saints, fun fact. So you got to look at these DraftKings, um, provide you these stats, um, these betting trends. It's, so it's good to look at, good to know. Um, some surprising things that to notice. FanDuel, FanDuel does not you know, provide this in their sports book, but DraftKings does. That's why I stay with DraftKings. And there's a lot of incentives with DraftKings. Uh, with the casino, you can make some more money. They got daily little boosts for you. Um, and it just, it just goes well. Uh, Saints have won each of the last eight games. Falcons have covered, um, eight of the last nine Sunday games as underdogs. So you gotta watch out for that. Um, and last four games between Saints and Falcons have gone on the under, which I like that as well, since, you know, um, Falcons offense going to be against Saints defense that a little bit might be a little bit troublesome. Julio is back, so they, they'll they have their full complement of weapons. We're not sure about Todd Gurley. And then on the other side, Taysom Hill is more of a runner. He's not going to sling the ball over. It's not Drew Brees at the helm. So that under is looking juicy as well. So I like the under and I like the Saints to win this game. OK, um, just looking at the last five meetings, uh, just looking at the trends four out of the last five, the Saints have won. So that's another benefit of choosing the Saints as well. Um, next game, we're going to go on to. We have the Detroit Lions going up against the Chicago Bears. Um, and at the end of this, I'm going to give you. Uh, a four leg parlay for four is fair four leg parlay of my favorite bets so far. Um, I should have put Saints in there, but we might do that. Um, but going with the, uh, you know what? I'm going to do one favorite. It's risky, but I'm going to do it. This is one of my favorites right here. The Chicago Bears going up against the Detroit Lions. The Detroit Lions are a very, 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 very bad, 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 bad team. They know how they lose in the weirdest ways. Okay. Um, fun fact, loss, Lions have lost each of the last nine games against NFC opponents. That's a nice little juicy fun fact. I don't think DeAndre Swift is going to play. We're questionable on Galladay. Um, Lions have failed to cover the spread in each of the last four games at Soldier Field. Um, the Bears are home. They have a very solid defense and they're going up against the Detroit Lions who struggled against pretty much everyone. Um, it's... Everything leans to Chicago. I understand Trubisky is the um, the quarterback now, but he is in uh, a situation where he needs to prove himself. He still was able to put up nice points despite, you know, struggling with fumbles and interceptions against the Packers. Um, Detroit Lions defense is not opportunistic like that. And I think he can capitalize, use his legs and really have a good fantasy day and real day um and propel this team into a win i mean this team has been on what a five game losing streak they are super super due that's why i like them on the money line in the last five games as you can see the last five times they face the lions it's the chicago bears every single time get 
you some Chicago Bears, all right? This is a very safe bet, I think, for uh, Bears against the Lions. They have a good history against them. Um, they have a good defense, and they are home. Okay, these are very key factors. All right, next game, we have the Jaguars against the Minnesota Vikings. The Jaguars have been playing tough each and every week. Mike Glennon is now the starter. No more um, Gardner Minshew, even though he is back. Even though he's back, Gardner Minshew has been, I think they like what they've seen out of Mike Glennon. He does have potential. Um, Jaguars have been, I think they've been covering lately. Uh, let's see. The over, the over, the average points per game between these two teams uh, is 61 points. The over looks kind of juicy. I like, I like both offenses, um, especially the Vikings. Um, Jaguars have lost each of the last 14 games as underdogs. I'm going to seven points or more. Understandable. I'm not looking for Jaguars to win necessarily. Um, underdogs have covered the, the spread in seven of the Vikings eight games at home. And that's the thing. When I'm looking at this uh, Minnesota Vikings team, do I trust Kirk Cousins to cover 10 points? 10 points. He's been playing better of lately. But I do not trust him to cover 10 points. And then the last two times these guys face, even though it's been, you know, 2016, 2012, they weren't able to beat the Jaguars by 10 at all. Um, Jaguars been playing, as you can see right here, they play Cleveland tough, only lost by two. Pittsburgh is on a whole nother level. And then this other game right here, Green Bay, they only lost by four. Uh, Houston only lost by two. They've been covering these numbers. Okay. One of my, Favorite bets this week as well is going to be the Jaguars plus 10. It was 10 and a half. Money's been coming in on the Jaguars to cover the spread. Now it went from 10 and a half to 10. So I like it. I'm not sure if I'm up for now. I'm going to put it in there. But um, I definitely think the Jaguars can cover plus 10. Um, and we're moving on. Next game, we have the Raiders against the New York Jets. Um, we kind of own them. I don't know. We suck. I get it, but I don't, I don't, Devontae Booker is now the running back. Josh Jacobs is out. Jonathan Abram is out. They have a lot of outs. Um, the Raiders should, should definitely win this game. Um, but also the Raiders have failed to cover the spread in the last seven games against AFC East opponents. Um, and the under, we don't really score that much. And I, I think it'll be one sided on the scoring department with the Raiders scoring it on, on our defense, which isn't, you know, we got a bunch of rookies, you know, rookies in the secondary and at the safety position. So I don't see us putting up a lot of points, but lately we've kind of owned this team. You got Las Vegas coming all, all the way over to New Jersey to play us. This could be a little tricky spot. So, um, I'm not putting it in my, my parlay. I'm either going to plus eight and a half with the Jets or I'm taking Vegas, Las, you know, Las Vegas Raiders, um, money line. That's it. I'm not trying to touch that minus eight and a half. I do not trust this team coming across country. They struggled a little bit the last couple of weeks, especially that surprising performance and loss against the Falcons. Uh, I'm definitely leaning towards the Jets plus eight and a half or, just take, you're going to have to take the Raiders minus three, um, 385. All right, just take the money line. I am not, I do not trust the Raiders to cover that number, despite the fact that we suck. Okay. Cleveland Browns against the Titans. A lot of people are all over the Tennessee Titans. Um, since they've, you know, played very well the last two weeks, beating the Colts and the Packers. Um, they didn't beat the Packers. They didn't beat the Packers. They beat the Colts and they beat the Ravens. Was it the Ravens? Let's see. Yes, Colts and Ravens. So Titans have been really red hot as of late. Um, Titans have failed to cover the spread in the last nine games as favorites. That's a little concerning. Titans have won each of the last three games against the Browns. But this is a situation where the Browns are in a division where they can't, they can't um, take first place. Because Steelers are undefeated. Um, the Cleveland Browns are in a little bit of a limbo, but they need to keep winning. All right. To stay, because they're going to be looking at the wild card. Okay. And they have some teams right behind them. 
Um, as of late, Tennessee has dominated these um, these two games, these two teams, um, winning three out of the last five. I want to take Brown's money line. I really do. I want to take Brown's money line, or I'm taking the Browns to cover. They're gonna. I think they're gonna slow down the game. They're more of a running oriented team. I don't like the over too much in this because the Browns they play good defense and the way they play is is run first, and then they'll look for the play action after, similar to the Tennessee Titans. Um, I like the under, or I like Cleveland Browns plus five and a half. Uh, is it a lock? Is it a lock? It's not. Gonna, I'm not gonna put it in my parlay. But it's the, something I'm definitely looking at, okay? Just to show you, I like this, and I like that. But at the end, I'm going to break it down to four. Uh, next game, we have the Bengals against the Miami Dolphins. Bengals using a backup quarterback. Miami Dolphins still tr- you know, deciding which quarterback between Tua and Ryan Fitzpatrick. Either way, it's a plus, okay? Giovanni Bernard has been slacking ever since taking over for Joe Mixon. Uh, Miami Dolphins, if Fitzpatrick is in there, I like Gusecki. I like uh, Devontae Parker. Uh, Miles Gaskins is being um, up activated from the IR. Bengals are decimated by injuries. And the question is, my, is Miami going to cover? I would say they would. But to be safe, just give me the money line. Okay. Miami, it, despite the fact that it's minus 500, which is not that much value, if you're looking for value, um, my, I see Miami putting up points, but I'm not sure about Bengals putting up points. Um, so I would either go the under or Miami money line, okay? The under or Miami money line on that game. Next game, we got... Um, is going to be, I'll throw that in there, but we'll do the, we'll do the under right there. Next game, we got the Colts against the Houston Texans. Houston Texans losing huge key players on offense and defensive side because of PEDs. Um, we got the under coming in hard the last time these, you know, the average points per game between these two teams is around 49. So, you know, Colts are, embarrassed of what they happened to them against the Tennessee Titans. They definitely want to prove a point against Houston Texans. There's no Will Fuller. There's no Jonathan Joseph on the secondary side. So the Colts, um, I think they bounced back from that horrible performance. I'm going to take the money line in this end division uh, matchup. Deshaun Watson is going to have to pull something out of his butt to beat the Colts, especially an angry Colts team. Um, and I think Jonathan Taylor's back, so they'll get that running game going against Houston takes Texans poor, poor run defense. So money line on the Colts for this game. Uh, we got the next one going on. We're in a four o'clock time slot. We have the New York Giants going up against the Seattle Seahawks. Colt McCoy is the starting quarterback for the Giants um, for Daniel Jones. Seahawks uh, finally home where they're undefeated. Um, so you already know the money line is is a guarantee. The question is, can the Seahawks cover this poor defense? I'm not sure, even despite the fact it's Colt McCoy throwing the ball. Um, this one is really, it's tough if you want to find value. If anything, I would lean towards an over. Um because definitely, I think Seahawks put up points. Russell Wilson get cooking with uh, DK Metcalf. Chris Carson, I think he gets back um, on a roll. And then Tyler Lockett. Th- those three weapons are going to be huge and hard for the Giants to you know corral. So I like an over of 47. Or we're going to take the money line in this game. Okay, over 47 and a half or the money line. And we're moving on. But that's not going to be in the final parlay. I'll, I'll give you my final parlay. Uh, next game, we got LA Rams against the Arizona Cardinals. In division matchup. I spoke about this. I did a video about this this game. Um, 
This is going to be tough. This is definitely going to be tough. Uh, Kyle Murray's been struggling, but he's back home. This game can go either way. Both of these teams really need this win, especially the Cardinals, because they're right behind um, the Rams. And then right behind Cardinals are the 49ers, who are coming on strong. Rams have won each of the last six games against the Cardinals. You got that kind of track record there. I think these offenses get cooking. Um, despite the fact the Rams are a good defense, the Cardinals run a very fast pace and can tire out a, de uh, a defense. Um, Cliff Kingsbury is very creative. So I like an over or, or let's see what else we got here. I like the over and then I'm going to just go with it. I'm going to just go with it. home dogs, home dogs. Give me the points. Okay. Home dogs, give me the points. Cardinals plus two and a half. Money has been coming in on that. They were three, three and a half um, point underdogs. Money's coming in on the um, Cardinals as home dogs. I like it there. They're back home. They've been on a two-game losing streak. I think they either win or at least cover that number. Okay? I feel confident about that. Next game on the slate. The New England Patriots against the Los Angeles Chargers. We have money coming in on the Chargers because it was very close. It was pretty even, and now money's coming in on Chargers. This game can uh, this game is tough, but we got Bill Belichick on the road. Can Cam muster some offense? Because you know um, Herbert's going to sling it. Herbert's not afraid. He is going to sling it. Uh, and now he's just going up against Bill Belichick. We know Gilmore is going to be on Keenan Allen. Is going to be locking him down. So these secondary options for the Chargers, Hunter Henry, Mike Williams, Guyton, Austin Eckler, they're going to have to step up. Um, obviously, you know, Patriots have won the last five games against the Chargers. That's, that's Tom Brady right there. Tom Brady. I don't see a lot of points in this game. I see a very defensive-oriented Game just because the the pace that the Patriots run is going to be very slow. They're going to work that run game and really tire out this defense. Um, I'm going with Patriots money line on this or the point spread, either or. But I think the Patriots are a better, well coached team. Anthony Lynn is has made so many mistakes mistakes this this season, especially in that game against Buffalo, uh, just making like dumb dumb decisions. And I think at the end in that fourth quarter the better coach will prevail, okay? Next game, we have the Eagles against the Packers. I'm not even going to really dig into this one. I clearly think the Packers beat the Eagles in this game at home in Green Bay. Um, give me the money line. I'm not going to get too crazy with the point line just because uh, Wentz could muster something up and do a late cover like he did last week. So these these plus you know these minus um point covers have been crazy the last couple weeks. Um, teams been covering. Teams have been covering. Give me the money line. Just give me the win. All right. This game Broncos Chiefs. I feel confident that the Chiefs will blow out the Broncos. Drew Lock coming back probably from injury. Oh, uh, not injury from COVID. Um, Denver. They don't have enough. The Chiefs are a well-oiled machine. I feel very confident that they will beat and handle the Denver Broncos. There's not many teams that can stop the – there's, there's like, no team that can stop the Chiefs and definitely not going to beat the Broncos, especially with the Chiefs at home. If the Broncos are home, then you can, like, you can play with the altitude and things like that, other factors. But Chiefs are home. Mahomes to Kelsey, Mahomes to Hill. It could be Mahomes to Pringle. It doesn't matter. Give me that minus 13 and a half. All right. Uh, next game we have, I'm going to start. Yeah, next game we're going to do Redskins or the football team, Washington football team against the Pittsburgh Steelers. This one has a lot of factors. I like the point, point line for the Redskins. And if you're really gutsy, give me the money line. This one is a toss up because you got Pittsburgh coming off a short week. They got their game canceled three times. Wind up playing on a Wednesday against a division rival. Very physical game against the Ravens. They didn't even cover that. And now you have to get ready for a well-coached Ron Rivera Washington football team. Their defense is stout. Those pass rushers are ready 
in the come to come after the Pittsburgh Steelers. This can be a look ahead spot, a a spot where you can take advantage of the Pittsburgh Steelers who are, you know, probably tired playing all these games, uh, playing, you know, two games in a very ti- short time slot. So I think we can get some value at plus seven or we can finally see Pittsburgh get a loss. Alex Smith, the veteran, muster up some offense. Antonio Gibson has been solid. Terry McLaurin is an elite wide receiver. And we're going to take a risk and go for Washington. Um, Last but not least, we have the 49ers against the Buffalo Bills. Um, I'm going to tell you right now, Buffalo Bills have been playing um, up and down football. Um, Came out red hot earlier in the season. And now we're in a situation where um, it's coming down a stretch. You've got the Miami Dolphins right down your back. Pit, uh, Patriots need to get a couple wins. They could be right down your back. The 49ers are in must-win mode. Switching to Nick Mullins has worked. Uh, Debo Samuel is back. Richard Sherman is back. They have momentum. They have a better defense. And I think uh, using the running game and and the offensive mind of uh, – Pure brilliant minded the guy in the 49ers. Give me the money line in the 49ers to beat the Bills. They face better competition. And I think um, they can force Josh Allen into some uh, mistakes like he usually does. Okay. Now we're going to do our last. Let me cut this down so I can give you a four leg parlay. We're going to take the Colts off. We're going to take the under off. We're going to take the uh, Raiders off. Uh, what else? We're going to take Washington off twice. I might leave that seven. I might leave that seven. Uh, I'll be as safe as possible. So I feel confident about that, though. I'm going to leave that off. That off. Um, Browns, 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 Browns. Browns. I'm going to leave the Patriots off. I feel confident in the Chiefs. I just need one more off. Okay. And we're going to leave the Browns off. So right here. We're going to go Bears. We're going to go Jaguars plus 10. We're going to go Green Bay Packers money line. And we're going to go Chiefs to cover by two TDs at least. Um, this is going to be a, my four-leg parlay plus 640. So you put $10 on that. That's 74 bucks. And if you want to put 15 20 whatever you want, that's the four-leg parlay for this week, for week 13. Thank you guys for tuning in. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. We already have 191 subscribers, nine away from 200. We're inching closer and closer. And then after that, I got a new goal um, to 300. We're just going to keep boosting up. I keep pumping out this content. We keep going up. Um, I appreciate you guys. Please don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MessageSD. I will see you tomorrow with another video. Peace out.